Hey everybody, welcome to my podcast here on Patreon. Today's episode will be special. Um, I'm Mestri Sukuri. I'm coming to you directly from Tokyo. I'm a professional capoeira mestri or master of capoeira. I've been living in Tokyo for about 23 years, since 1999, and I came to teach capoeira basically right off the plane. So let me jump right into what I'm doing and what's going on. Today's podcast is from my Patreon community, and generally you have to be a member to be a part of it, but I'm doing this one today so that maybe we can entice some people to come join and support what I'm doing here on Patreon. So this episode today will be out there for the general public, and I'll also put this on my YouTube channel and wherever else I can you know, put this up. Although this is episode seven, I think I need to recap what the goal of this podcast is going to be. So generally, I'm making the podcast between 15, 20 to 30 minutes. I want to kind of cap it off at 30 minutes so that it's digestible, as my goal is to make at least four podcasts a week. And when I say that, it's because I want to be able to release by 9 a.m. on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays, Tokyo time. The reason for that is because it fits better with my schedule as a full-time capoeira teacher. The goal of this podcast is basically twofold. One, I want to be able to share my life experiences so that people can reflect on it and be able to see that not everyone is just alone in the world. And if you're teaching capoeira, this podcast is especially made for you. There's a lot of good material. There's a lot of messages that I follow in Portuguese on YouTube, podcasts, and they're doing a great job of addressing a lot of the issues within the Capoeira community. However, as a cultural anthropologist, I do see a big distinction between teaching Capoeira as a Brazilian in Brazil and internationally and the difference between teaching capoeira internationally or outside of Brazil as a non-Brazilian. So I want to be able to hopefully use this platform to help you guys navigate the international capoeira community and help you guys on your path as capoeira teachers. If you're not a capoeira teacher, if you're part of my community, I'm hoping that this will also be inspirational for you And at times, you'll be able to reflect in your own lives and in your own personal relationships so that it makes, helps you make better choices and live a healthier and more positive life. The second goal of this podcast is to create some type of mentorship for non-Brazilian capoeira teachers. And It's not based on the fact that we are not Brazilian, but there is a different dynamic when you're teaching capoeira as a non-Brazilian. And I'm talking from a position of someone who's been doing it for many years. I've been teaching capoeira in Japan since 1999. So this is my professional career, my academic career. Everything I do is based on, on capoeira. Before I left San Diego in 1998, in 1999, I finished all the coursework on in a Latin American studies program at San Diego State, the master's program. At the time, it was one of the top uh, Latin American programs in the United States. And my focus was Afro-Brazilian culture. Uh, as you go higher in education, and I've said this before, you become more specific. Originally, my thesis was going to be the lyrics of capoeira as a form of social, political, and philosophical expression. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to finish my thesis before I moved to Japan. And things like online didn't exist at the time for me in this situation at that level. So I wasn't able to get my master's completely done, but I do have all the coursework. So I've put in all the work and all the time. Secondly, I did my master's here and finally got the MA credential at Waseda University, which is one of the top universities in Asia and in Japan especially. And it was the International Relations Program at the Graduate School of Asian Pacific Studies. The program focused on different aspects at the time. It was involved, it was, it was connected to the recently established uh, MBA program 
at Waseda. So I also had an opportunity to take many wonderful classes and rewire my brain to understand how to be a better entrepreneur in Capoeira, in Asia, especially in Japan, and how things work here. But my main focus was on the importation and globalization of Afro-Brazilian culture, especially into Japan. My thesis finally being Brazil in the land of the rising sun, globalization and importation of Afro-Brazilian cultural arts such as capoeira, Afro-Brazilian dance, and samba. So I think I have a very strong academic and professional, but at the same time, I'm the same guy who hangs out with Brazilian masters at two in the morning, drinking whiskey, talking about the problems and all the different issues in the capoeira world when I travel. So I want to be able to bring those two points together and hopefully create an incredibly positive mentoring experience for those people who are teaching capoeira now, who eventually will have to run into some of the challenges and obstacles that are associated with teaching a Brazilian art. I'm sure this happens in many, in whatever you do, for example, if you're teaching African dance, or I know it happens a lot. One of the biggest criticisms here in, in Japan that you hear a lot is when foreigners come here to learn something Japanese, there are there's so many people are, are told, well, you won't be able to do it perfectly because you're not Japanese. I think we're at a point in life now where we understand that just basing something on a racial uh, stereotype is, is racism. So I want to stay away from that and just talk about for the people who are doing the movers and the shakers. If you're involved in Capoeira, I'm hoping that this will be a mentorship opportunity for you guys to reflect on. I'm 52 this month and I'm really excited to be able to speak from a little bit of experience. In my life, uh, I've spoken, I, every day I speak English, Spanish, Japanese, and Portuguese. I know a lot of times people say they're polyglots or speak several languages, but I actually have to because my relationships uh, demand it. I've been able to present in Portuguese, Spanish, English, at the graduate level, so I feel pretty comfortable speaking in all those three languages. Japanese, I speak well, and there was a time when I was at graduate school where my, my higher Japanese, we call kego, was pretty good, but like a skill, if you don't use it, it diminishes a little bit. But I do speak Japanese fluently to the point of where I can communicate my thoughts and lead my business life here in Japan. Yesterday, I was reflecting a lot on my YouTube channel. I was going through different uh, playlists and checking different things so that I could have some ideas for the podcast, especially revisiting some of the old videos that I put out so that I could uh, reflect on them and update them. I'll also be updating and reflecting a lot on my two books, The Path of Capoeira, which I released in 2013, and what I released two years ago, Capoeira Fire. So I hope that through this process, I'm able to communicate how I've evolved as a capoeira mestri. There's almost a joke I do with Mestri Linguisa, who's the other mestri for our group. And I said, sometimes I can understand why there are different levels of mestris. In some groups, you'll have like mestri first level, mestri second level, mestri third level, mestri fourth level. And for a while, I always thought like, what's the point? Once you're mestri, you're mestri. But now I'm understanding not only the, the structural importance, but a little bit also the spiritual importance. Although I don't see me changing our group's uh, belt system, spiritually, mentally, and psychologically, I really do feel I've leveled up, especially post-pandemic. And I really hope to share some of this evolution with all of you. Just a brief overview of some of the things I hope to revisit are such as the meaning of capoeira leadership, what it means to be a master of capoeira, what it means to teach in a foreign country, what it means to teach as a non-Brazilian in a foreign country. Generally, when people are teaching capoeira, if they're non-Brazilian, they're generally teaching in their own country. I haven't met a lot of people who are non-Brazilian who are teaching in other countries, although you do see that once in a while. 
I think it's a very small percentage. If you guys know somebody who's teaching in another country that's not their own country and they're not Brazilian, I'd love to connect with them and ask them about their experiences. And hopefully in the future, I'll be able to do interviews on this podcast where people can reflect on other people's experiences as well. I'm also going to be focusing heavily on my book, On the Path of Capoeira, and I'll also be fo focusing heavily on the second book and comparing in contrast Capoeira Fire with the first book and how the things have changed over the years. I feel I'm in a pretty rare, special place because I do have a lot of good connections with a lot of Brazilian mestres and mestras that give me a unique opportunity to communicate and ask questions, while at the same time, the language ability to be able to translate it. Another reason I'm doing this is because now Capoeira Zoador, my group, has mostly non-native speakers, non-Brazilians, either teaching or involved in the group. And the reason is because I'm in Asia. There's actually not that many Brazilians involved with Capoeira in Asia. For example, when I was in Korea, uh, Shiru, really, really great young capoeirista. I believe he's the only Brazilian teaching capoeira in Korea. So we sometimes discuss the dynamics and his English is incredible. Going to have to remember to interview him about his process in Korea and how it's working out for him. I also look forward to interviewing other non-Brazilian capoeira instructors around the world. So if you guys know anybody, please send me a link or an introductory email and I'll definitely contact them. The other thing I'm going to be focusing on this podcast is also talking about the everyday things that I have to deal with. For example, recently I'm doing a lot of videos and it has become a new passion and hobby. I record music. I want to be able to share a lot of the experiences I learned through my unique capoeira growth. In some instances, I really feel that I had a unique experience growing here as a Mexican-American in Tokyo, adopted by the Brazilian arts community over the last 20 years, because I have so many fun stories that I want to share with everybody, and so many stories that are really important, so that you understand the behind the scenes and a lot of the community you'll be dealing with as a capoeira instructor, especially as a non-Brazilian capoeira instructor. So from this point on, I'm going to be speaking a lot about the different relationships, the different experiences, and the different technical, philosophical, cultural, and just my experience in general, how I got to the point where I am. Today, I feel I am successful. Now, what I mean by successful is what I feel for my life is good. Right now, I can go out, I can have a cup of coffee, I can relax. If I lose, you know, 10 students, I'm not going to go bankrupt. I'm able to take care of my family. I'm able to support my kids' education, all the different things. I'm a very confirmed minimalist. My son always talks about it. I said, I just grew up poor, so I don't need a lot. And I don't buy a lot. If I have a, you know enough money for some snacks, for some fun, a couple of beers, I'm good to go. Another thing I really want to talk about when I'm mentoring people is the importance of creating the correct or good and healthy relationships. Earlier in the podcast, I think podcast number one, I talked a lot about cutting all the toxic relationships in your life. And this is also very important. So... To wrap it up, I'm going to be doing a lot about mentorship, especially for non-Brazilian Capoeira teachers. I'm going to be doing a lot, which I hope inspires my friends, family, community, and anyone who's read any of my books. I hope to do a lot in revisiting a lot of the topics in leadership, uh, how to run your business. This will even affect you if you're running a, a martial arts school, a dance school, whatever. And as we're going through this process, I'm also going to be doing a lot of things that I can do to keep my promise to my son. Last week, my son went to Rwanda on a scholarship, as some of you might know. And I promised him at the airport that by the time he comes back in three months, I will have leveled up to a point where he can see that I've changed a lot to be even a better father, a better mesty, a better businessman, and be ready for when he gets back. Somebody I'm really incredibly proud of. So guys, that wraps it up. 
I'm going to put this on pop social media. People will be able to see it. If you're interested in checking out the other episodes and the new episodes coming out, like I said, I'm going to try to do episodes Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday mornings, 9 a.m. release, Tokyo time, because that fits in with my schedule of teaching Capoeira and all the other things I do. If you want to see all the behind the scenes, everything else that I'm doing, then I want you guys to join here on Patreon and support. Guys, thank you so much for your time and energy. Thank you for listening to me. And let's go forward. Have a great day.